Now, Ace Fraley. I played lead guitar, rhythm guitar, acoustic guitar, synthesizer, and bass. I did all the lead vocals and uh, half of the background vocals. Uh, a guy named Anton Fig, who, as you heard, is pretty uh, incredible. It's really funny, I, I like to say that when I, I told people that I'm playing every instrument on the record, just about, you know, and doing all the vocals and some background vocals to my own voice, and they say, wow, that must be really hard. The reality of the situation is that when you're playing against your own rhythm tracks, you know them better than anybody else does because you wrote them. And it's, it's really, I find it a lot easier to play against my own re recordings than uh, playing against somebody else's because I know exactly what I did prior to the uh, overdub. Most accomplished guitar players that can play rhythm and lead can usually play bass without any problem. And I, I was in groups where I used to have to teach, you know, the guy how to play bass, you know, couldn't figure it out, so I have to figure it out for him. So, you know, I was always very well acquainted with bass guitar. I think it'll expand their views. I, I certainly think I've expanded my musical horizons just a little, you know, on this record. I think it'll, you know, I hope that, you know, people say, wow, you know, I didn't think he could do this or do that or could sing like that. Because, you know, I, I did a lot of different things with my voice that I've never been able to do up until now. And, you know, I also got a, a couple of interesting guitar sounds I've never, you know, reproduced before on record. So I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. Well, I have, a, I have a really big guitar collection and a big amplifier collection, all old amplifiers, you know, dating back to the 40s and 50s. And, you know, up until now, you know, whenever we did KISS albums, you know, a lot of times we were on a very hectic schedule, as you very well know, with touring and everything. And a lot of times we didn't have as much time as we wanted to, you know, to, to do records, and uh, especially guitar solos, you know. It was always the kind of thing where, all right, come on, you got to do a solo, we, you know, you have eight hours to do it, or whatever. And that's the way, we, you know, we'd whip them out. But, you know, in this case of the solo albums, you know, we took two, I took two months to record it. It was the kind of thing where I brought all my guitars and all my amplifiers to the studio. And, you know, sometimes we just spend the whole day on a, a guitar solo to get the right sound. And I think it shows. I think uh, it wasn't very different working with Eddie, uh, with Kiss as it was with the solo album. It's just that I just saw another side of him and he saw another side of me. You know, we worked a lot closer on this project than we did in the past because it was just me and Eddie. He didn't have to worry about three other guys. It was just me and Eddie, basically, and, uh, and Anton. Anton supplied the percussion, and I supplied just about everything else. And it was just like the three of us went up to a mansion in Connecticut. We took it over, and uh, we cut all the basic tracks up there. And it was, it was really fun. It was just me and Eddie. We started with rhythm, basic rhythm tracks, just rhythm guitar and drums, and then we started layering everything on top of it. I put the bass on. And then after we got all the basic tracks, we came down to Manhattan at Plaza Sound and did all the, most of the guitar solos and the vocals and stuff, synthesizer. So it came out, you know, basically we kept on schedule and everything turned out basically the way we wanted it to. So I really don't have any complaints about the record. Well, for a while, I was very dormant. I think, you know, when, when the Alive One album hit and I was, you know, bogged down with, with traveling and, you know, I decided to get married, you know, around that time. And it, there was so much going on in my life, my creativity kind of went down. And if you check the records, you know, Destroyer or the one after that, I, only, I think I only wrote maybe one song on either of those albums. But uh, this is probably the first project where I've really came out of my shell, so to speak. And, uh, you know, wrote all the songs except for one. And uh, I think now that I've, you know, realized what my uh, abilities are, I think I'll probably be doing a lot more in the future with Kiss, you know. I'm sure each of the albums are going to bring out one side of, of all of us that none of us never knew we had. I think it's going to make us all better as one unit. I could, yeah, this, that was the first, uh, I, I'll never forget the first night when we, we did that tour, and the guy said, you got to do Shock Me Live. 
and I was really nervous. <laughs> you know, to get up in front of 20,000 people and sing lead, and I never have before. So. But I, you know, I, I just tried not to think about it. And it just happened, you know, it came natural. I would say I'm more confident now as a singer and guitar player than I've ever been in my life, probably. A lot of the insecurities have gone away that I've had in the past. Everybody's insecure in their own. Well, see, I, I'm never satisfied with what I do. You know, I'll say it's good, even, and I do do some good guitar work, but I always want to strive for a higher level. A lot of times I can't, you know. A lot of times playing live, all of us have to give up little musicianship for jumping up in the air and doing a flip or whatever. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, I'm sure, you know, I, I'm sure I could play more proficient live if I stood still and, and never had to do any choreography. And, but you know, you give, you give a little, and you, it's a give and take situation. It's like everything. You gotta, you gotta give up something to gain something else. Oh yeah, most of the English, you know, the English rock invasion affected me uh, in a very positive way. You know, I really thought that they had it, you know. I had the right idea. Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, uh, Peter Townsend was a big influence on me. When I, first, I saw the Who's first New York appearance at the Murray Decay show, and they were opening up for Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. And I was there with my friend, I was 16, 15 or 16 years old, and he threw his guitar 20 feet in the air and caught it and a smoke bomb went off. I said, this is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. This, I want to do the same thing. Oh, I really did. In fact, it was that point in my life where I was kind of I'd always been a, wanted to be a commercial artist. You know, I designed the KISS logo, and I've designed other, other things for people. You know, I, I, my specialty is logos. I, I'm into lettering and all that kind of stuff, and layout work. And uh, when I was around 16, you know, that was a point in my life where I said, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to you know, go to art school and really seriously become a commercial artist? Or do I want to be a rock and roller? And after seeing, you know, the Who live, they, they really made the decision for <laughs> me. It was pretty, pretty inspiring, that, that type of... Th theatrics mixed with rock and roll always excited me the most, you know. I mean, good rock and roll is good rock and roll, but when you can mix it with a theatrical show and make, and make it that much more exciting, that's what really, that's what, that's probably the whole, you know, the whole thing that makes KISS work. Well, I, the answer to that is obvious. I mean, it has to, some of it has to rub off, you know, even if you try to block it out of your mind. I mean, we're becoming an institution at this point. And, you know, even subconsciously when I write material, you know, sometimes it comes out, uh, well, you know, I'm a rock and roller, you know, and KISS is rock and roll. Ace Fraley with New York Groove. Well, that's KISS, as you've never heard KISS before. And a sneak preview of the four new albums from the Masters of Rock and Roll.